All right, well, welcome guys to another call with one of our fellow RTQ students. Um, today, I'm actually speaking with Dominique. Dominique has essentially graduated from Road to QA by landing her first offer. And um, I believe she's gotten started with working we're about to, but I would love for Dominique to just go ahead and, you know, welcome Dominique and let us know how has your journey been? What did you start? How, well, first of all, how did you come into um, coming into contact with Road to QA? So I actually probably got Road to QA like over a year ago. Um, oh, so <laughs> you like one of the first ones, you like one of the first ones, girl. <laughs> yeah, so it was probably like last, maybe like last January or last February. And so okay. then I kind of started the process of going through the program and then life happened. And then I kind of stopped. And then when you started the 2.0, I got back into it, went into the course, did the internship, the beta internship with you live for the four weeks. And then I also did another internship with you like the following next month. And then from there, I met with Lori in January and did interview prep with her. And then in February, like in the January, I started applying to jobs. And then initially I got an offer last month. Okay, awesome. So when did you start? So I started on Monday. Oh, and how has that been? So it has been interesting to say <laughs> the least. Um, far as like onboarding, uh, mm -hmm. this company has kind of just been like, hear some stuff, read over it. And then we'll meet back with you in maybe like a week to check in and see if you have any type of questions. So onboarding has been very interesting to say the least. <laughs> okay. And so how is this pivot? How was this pivot into QA and landing your first one? How has this helped you or what, um, what is the, the benefit from you pivoting and landing you, your first one? Um, how does that change your life or improve your life or your direction? So I was a dental hygienist um, prior to this. And so I was been a dental hygienist for 10 years. So I just wanted to kind of get away from just having to go in every day dealing with the public. I wanted a little bit more as far as like flexibility and freedom. So that has been a good aspect so far. Okay. Yeah. And that's interesting because a lot of times we are, you know, trying to, you know, also just get more money and stuff like that. But I'm finding a lot more people are kind of making life decisions now based upon maybe they want to be more at home with their kids, or maybe they just don't want to be, you know, um, outside with people all, you know, always in the public eye. Um, or maybe they want to go to school or build a business. So they just want more time and something that's going to allow that. So it's interesting, like you seeing the pivot. How um, was your first offer? Was Did you take a pay cut at all? Was it an increase? Or was Because you said a dental hygienist. So I'm like, how was that financially for you? Did you so, um, so that was one thing I was just like, I mean, it was an increase from what I was already making. So that was something that I was grateful for. Um, Cause that was one thing I was kind of concerned with because I already kind of had a good salary as far as being a dental hygienist. So mm -hmm. I, my first job offer, I was just kind of concerned that I didn't want to have to take a pay cut, but fortunately I actually got a pay raise from what I was previously making. Okay. Awesome. And from here, how do you feel um, you want to use your pivot like are you looking to, to grow in this or what what is what's for Dominique like what do you plan on doing now since you were looking to get out of kind of pivoting out of the dental hygienist I just I want to just grow and just learn different things like I'm very interested in doing automation initially me wanting to get into tech I wanted to do cybersecurity. Um, but then I saw Road to QA and I was just really intrigued by everything that software testing had to offer. So I just want to just pivot to see where I can go from here and just test out different career paths eventually. Awesome. And how did the internship help you? What was your experience there? So the internship helped as far as just being able to have that experience of like what a day can actually be from being able to doing like the actual like backlog grooming of what stories we were going to be doing, then being able to 
actually be on hands on far as like doing the test cases with my peers being able to do peer reviews to get their feedback on if there was something that I needed to change or update to actually being able to execute. I'm a very visual learner. So Mm -hmm. being able to have that hands-on experience really helped me besides like studying and reading it, being actually to apply what I actually knew. And how was that, how was it getting into the market? I do know that you, like you say, you also studied and got support with Lori with interviewing, but how, how was it getting in the market and landing your first interviews? What was that experience? How did you feel? Did you feel imposter? Did you feel like giving up at any point? Did you have to do a lot of interviews? Like how was that process? So definitely imposter syndrome to the highest level. Um, (laughs) So I had, I actually got um, offered, I only did two interviews. Um, I had interviews the same day. So the first interview, it was just like, I was just very nervous, very anxious. Um, The guy had asked me a lot of technical questions. So Mm -hmm. I tried like to the best of my ability to get through it. And so then after that, interview was over with I had my second interview and I was just like so discouraged because I was just like I bombed this first interview I don't want to do this second interview but my family and friends was just like just go ahead and do it get it out of the way Um, Mm -hmm. so my second interview went a lot better I just kind of went in there and I was just like asking them a bunch of questions about the position and kind of interviewing them in a sense so Mm -hmm. that interview went a lot well and initially that was the job offer that I got from that one so what do you think was the difference from the first interview to the second interview honestly like they did not I could say like did not really ask me they asked me minimum questions like that was like crazy part about it like it wasn't as technical I mean there was questions asked but it wasn't as technical as the first interview. The first interview was really technical because it was about testing a lot of hardware on far as like medical devices. So the guy was very like technical, like, have you done this? Have you done that? Um, API testing and things of those natures. As I told him, I was familiar and I was like intrigued to learn more, but I didn't have that much experience. So I don't know if it was maybe how I came off with how I answered the questions where the second interview, I was just like, I'm just going to go in here and I'm just going to give it my all where the first interview, I was just so anxious and so nervous. Okay. And how was it when you got your first offer? How did that feel? Like, cause it sounded like you, like you thought it was okay, but it doesn't sound like you just felt like they was actually going to like give you an offer though. Yeah. Um, I was like, actually like, really shocked because after I did the interview um because I'm contracted the guy actually texted me like three hours later and was like they want to bring you on board (laughs) so I was actually like really shocked after that um interview and so then like the next week the next week I got my offer now for me I really I personally like contract jobs personally because I like to get more and then I also I I don't live a certain way so I don't feel I max my lifestyle so I'm always prepared or to you know if I need to do something else how do you feel with this one is it contract to direct hire or contract or what is the terms of this one so it's just it's a government contract so I'm um working for a company and then we're doing our project that we're working for is for the government so it's not it's just going to be completely contract okay so it doesn't it doesn't have an end date or so no it doesn't have an end date at all oh okay so sounds like you are probably good to go then a lot of those just keep on rolling over over and over that's just kind of how they do it normally um but how do you feel like do you feel comfortable that you know, God forbid if something ever happens, do you feel like you can do this again? And do you feel like now you you said you're just starting though, so you haven't really got all the way into it, but do you feel like you can do this again? And do you think that the investment that you've made, you know, is going to return you the ability to keep, you know, a, a job within a skill? Um, yes, I do feel like I can do it again. I feel like with this first job, like I said, just me getting that hands-on experience will make me more comfortable I feel like Mm -hmm. 
if I have to get back into the market again, by having that hands-on experience, whether it be for a couple of months, whether it be for a year, just that experience in itself will give me more comfortability to get back into the market to interview. I think that was my main thing was I just didn't have so much far as hands-on experience that I wanted to be able to display, I guess, in a sense. Mm -hmm. So I was just so nervous when it came to interviewing, but I do feel like that having to get back into the market, doing it all again, I could. Okay. And then you, you definitely were in a part of, you know, our early groups of our betas and me, you know, adding more hands-on and seeing what that looks like and then trying to add it and keep road to QA. And we've actually added even more that goes into internships. So from that perspective, or just generally, like, what do you think road to QA could have done or could do to help more? Um, or how do you think the road to QA could have uh, helped you more to prepare for the interview of what you're doing? Like, do you think that you you still would have needed more? Do you think that you were comfortable to stand in where you were and just keep skilling up until that first one gave you um, an opportunity? I think I was comfortable um, where I was at. It was just like, just me probably personally, just like skilling up more. I feel like all the tools that you give us and the resources that you give us are more than enough. It was just me just being comfortable and me just being myself. That's just how I am. Yeah. And then just, I think also as being scared of the unknown, like you can, I think you having to just remember also that regardless of what you learn within the program or, or this company, when you go, if you go into another company a year from now, their tools and their process is going to be a different way, right? Like you're going to know QA, you're going to understand it, but you're still going to have to relearn their way. So you'll always still have a bit of feeling kind of imposters, right? Because they may do it a different way or, you know, use Jira a different way or may not use it and they use another tool or they want you to do more API over here. And you just have to always kind of have to be ready to know that you're going to have to either relearn, skill up, or just be ready to learn their way. So, you know, um, just definitely you be ready for that too. But um, so from here, do you have any kids, Dominique? I don't know that I ever. Yeah, have I have a, yeah, I have a, I have a 14 year old son. A 14 year old son. And so now it sounds like you work remote now. So you're yes. at home. Yes, I work from home now. So now you get to be at home with your your baby and how does that help you out like having that option right like you could always go back and be a, a dental hygienist right but yeah. you know how does this really help you be able to know that you can be there for him that helps out just that flexibility just helps out a lot just to being able to kind of know my schedule or plan my day um not really being tied down um I wish I could have been able to get into this profession years ago when he was like younger because it's just like I felt like I missed out on so much because of the job obligation and it wasn't oh can I get off here can I get off there or I have a break in between just because of the career path that I was in but now I feel like I have that flexibility to be able to be more involved or do more things with him than I could before. Well, I think I personally think you're on a great track, um, Dominique. I don't think I, I know a lot of times we always want to go, you know, we, we wish we did something earlier. But honestly, with you also saying that you're going to go into, you know, you were looking at cybersecurity. I don't know if you're still doing, you know, looking at that. But, you know, I would definitely say, like, remember, QA is just that one way. Now you have the skills, you know, even the, you know, like you still have the income where you can reinvest into another program, skill yourself and you know cybersecurity is going to be there. So from here, is to me, I think it's just up six figures and up from here. So I don't think you're behind. I actually think you're right where you need to be. Sometimes, you know, it's just not the season. That's just my personal. <laughs> yeah. That's just my personal thing. Well, I don't want to hold you. I just want to say thank you for coming on and chatting with us. You know, I hope I asked the questions that um, most people kind of want to know. So obviously, like, uh, I guess one more I ask is, so you have a degree? Yes, I do. So you have a degree, um, but you, this this is still your first QA job that you've landed. This is a pivot for you. Um, so prior to this, you had not been in QA in any way, right? No, correct. It was just right. completely dental hygiene, yes. Okay, awesome. And so from here, can I ask you your income? Um, so now from like what I make right now or what I was previously making? 
uh, both of you want to share? So, I mean, I was previously uh, as a dental hygienist, I was making $88,000 a year. And then the first position that I got right now is 102. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and what are you testing, Dominique? That's my last, like, what type of company is this? Do you, uh, you don't have to say the name, but like, do you know what, what you're testing? So um, we're doing, um, we're going to be testing on ServiceNow. It's for um, an HR. We're testing like the HR processes for a government contract. Oh, that's huge. You know, once you get that service now in there, that's a whole nother skill set and just knowledge right there. So definitely add that on real quick that you, you know, speaking to that. That's huge. Okay. Well, I, yeah, I want to say thank you. I hope I asked the questions. I want to keep you on long, but this is just to show you this is another Road to QA student who was able to um, make her pivot. Uh, her, her story is unique to her own life situation. And she, as she said, she has a degree. We have students that maybe don't come from having that degree, but it still shows you that whether you do or you don't, this can definitely happen to you. So I want to say thank you, Dominique, for speaking with me. And I'm going to log off here so I can give her a quick uh, virtual hug and chat and goodbye. And you guys. I hope you enjoyed this quick chat with our student. Thanks.